Abraham fell face down. He laughed, said to himself, Will a son be born to a man a hundred years old? Will Sarah bear a child at the age of nine? And Abraham said to God, if only Ishmael might live under your blessing. Then the Lord, then God said, yes, but your wife Sarah will bear you a son. And you will call him Isaac, not Ishmael. You will call him Isaac. You will call him Isaac. I'm going to come back and get that later. I will establish my covenant with him. As an everlasting covenant for his descendants after him. And as for Ishmael, I have heard you. I will surely bless him. I will make him fruitful and will greatly increase his numbers. He will be the father of 12 rulers and I will make him into a great nation. Watch verse 21. But my covenant I will establish with Isaac. Whom Sarah will bear to you by this time next year. Amen. I want to talk to you for a few moments from the text. You will finish well. Amen. Part two. Let's pray. Father God, in the name of Jesus. We come to you now just to say thank you. Lord God, we thank you for this moment. We thank you for this opportunity. We thank you for this season that we're in. We thank you for being right on the edge of the new season, oh God. Hallelujah. A lot of people didn't make it to this inflection point. A lot of people didn't make it to this point. They gave up too soon. So, Father, we thank you for allowing us to get right here to the edge of destiny. Hallelujah, Jesus. Father God, move in this place. Allow me to teach with clarity and clear understanding. Have your way, oh God. Transform our lives today. Establish covenants in the room, oh God. In the mighty name of Jesus, we pray. Holy Ghost fire in the room. May we encounter you today, oh God. And may our lives never be the same through your way around in this room. Huh. And we'll be careful to give you all the praise and the glory. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray. Somebody say amen. 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 I'm not going to keep you long. I'm not going to keep you long. That's my aim. Mm. <laughs> my aim is give me 30 minutes. Amen. 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 So I, I want to talk to you about benefits of obedience. Amen. amen. Three benefits. I want to talk to you about three benefits of obedience. Last week we talked about disobedience. This week I want to talk about obedience. Uh, so point number one, if you're taking notes. Obedience shows God you love him. Obedience shows God that you love him. You see, God is not seasonal, nor is he circumstantial. He loves us when we obey, and he loves us when we don't. We switch up on God depending on how we feel. All right. Depending on how we feel, uh, most all most church folk need to abandon God is a storm. Mm, most church folk will give up on God if the right storm blows into their life. Right. They'll quit coming to church. They'll quit worshiping at home. They'll quit praying. They'll quit tithing. They'll quit fasting just because a storm blew into their life. I'm glad God is not seasonal like us. Amen. I'm glad God is not seasonal like us. Uh, let some trouble come into their life. And I want to tell uh, people that faith must be tested. Amen. If your faith is not tested, if, if your structure can't sustain a low end, it ain't going to stand the test of time anyhow. Amen. And so if a little storm can make you quit God, you don't love him as much as you think you do. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Glory to God. Uh, let some trouble come into their life. And most tr church folk fold like laundry. They, they fold, they give up. I'm not going to church no more. I tried the Jesus thing. That, that let a storm come on, blow in. Let a little discomfort come in. And all of a sudden, it's, I don't understand why God would let this happen to me. And I don't know why God, if he loved me so much, would let me go through this. And if God is really on my side, why do I keep hitting wall after wall? If God really loved me, I'd be blessed like my neighbor Tony. But but God don't love me like he loved Tony. And does he know that Tony be doing this, that, and the third? Well, we get so finicky yeah. when God 
doesn't do. When storms come, when things become difficult, or if things become, or if it, uh, my favorite one, if things begin to take too long. Come on, all right. <laughs> if things begin to take too long, we start side eyeing God, like, what you doing up there? I thought you loved me. I, you, you showed me some stuff when I went to sleep. I didn't ask for that dream. I, I didn't ask for that business model. I, I didn't ask for that. You, I, I didn't think that up. You gave that to me. Why is it taking so much time? On, we start side eyeing God when things take too long. Uh -huh. <laughs> Come on, Pastor. And while we're side-eyeing God, we tend to forget how long-suffering he is. Mm, come on, man. Mm. We tend to forget uh, how patient he is with us. Come on, Pastor. He tolerated us when we said we wasn't going to do it again. Come on, man. Oh. Indeed. Hallelujah. He tolerated us when uh, we said we would wait for him. Come on, man. And obey. <laughs> uh, he tolerated us when we stood up in church and lied to everybody and our mama. Uh, I just say yes. <laughs> you lead the way. We all in front of church crying, say, Lord, just lead me and I'll follow. Hallelujah. Lying in front of everybody. And he tolerated us anyway. Come on, man. Lord, just, just send me. I'll go. The lie detector test determined that was a lie. Come on, man. Amen. <laughs> Jonah came to a situation. He said, no, sir. And he ran the opposite direction. Better come on, mm -hmm. Jonah was in Israel, found himself in Spain somewhere. Uh -huh. Anybody? Come on, <laughs> God said, I want you to do this. And you run 2,000 miles in the opposite come direction. On, come on, come on. <laughs> Lord, I'll do anything but that. Can, can't you give me something else? Can you give me another battle? Can you give me another fight? I'll do anything, Lord, but just not this one. And he tolerated us anyhow. Anyhow. I'm so glad God not like us. Amen. We will lay down on God for the smallest inconvenience. Yes. The smallest inconvenience. A stomach ache keep a lot of church folk in bed. Good to see you, Sister Kim. Amen. <laughs> An allergic reaction will keep a lot of folks down. Good to see you, First Lady. Uh, some church folk, all they need is an excuse. Any old excuse to do. Come on, man. I'm a little tired today. I don't, I don't know. <laughs> I know they need me. I know they need me, but, but I'm tired today. I just can't. God tolerates us anyhow. We'll lay down on God for the smallest inconvenience. I'm glad God don't call in sick on us. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Can you imagine what would happen to you if God took a sick day? I've been driving down the road and something to say, get over. And I'm saying, why am I getting over? And boom, there's an accident. What if God took a sick day on us? I'm trying to rush out the house and something say, don't leave yet. So I stand still in Terry just to see there's an accident where I would have been 15 minutes ago. What if God took a sick day on us? What if he said, you know what? I'm not going to check in on them today. They got it. <laughs> they can handle it. <laughs> I'll come back later. He's always steadfast. He's always available. I like that. You know, stores close. When Walmart said they weren't gonna be 24 hours, I lost my mind. I said, "What you mean? Y'all not gonna be open past 10:30? What are you talking about?" <laughs> I might eat my ice cream late night. I, I might need me a Coca-Cola at midnight. Yeah. I'm so glad God is always available because no matter what I need, I can always go to him and receive him. Yeah. He's always, he's always available. And he's always ready and willing and able. Yes, Lord. He's always willing and able. So our obedience shows God that we love him and that we appreciate him. And that we see everything that he does for us. Because nobody likes to be taken for granted. Amen. And nobody likes to be the one doing all of the doing. And there's never no re reciprocity. Come on, come on. Yeah, yeah. I must be reciprocated for my love. Come on, man. Amen. Amen. <laughs> Amen. Come on, <laughs> That's good. 
I can't be the one going the extra mile all of the time. Amen? Amen. I must be reciprocated. I, I've got to see that you love me as much as I love you. I have to see that you're willing to put in the same amount of work and effort that I'm putting in. Amen. Our obedience yes, Lord. shows God that we love him. Yes. Lamentations 3.22 teaches, because of the Lord's great love, we are not consumed. Mm -hmm. For his compassions never fail. Mm -hmm. They are new every morning. I, you know, I really wish I could do that. Sometimes I go to sleep with attitude. Mm -hmm. And then I'll get up with one. Amen. <laughs> Can I be honest? <laughs> Amen. You want to talk about something new? I'm still on yesterday. Hold on. Back up. <laughs> Wait a minute now. We got some things to address. <laughs> Uh, his compassions fail not They are new every morning Great is your faithfulness I say to myself the Lord is my portion Therefore I will wait Come on, I will wait for him Anybody been thinking about giving up mm. This your green flag to stand still <laughs> Point number two The longer you remain obedient The greater the reward now I need us to really like hold on to this the longer you remain obedient the greater the reward so let's look at Abraham's life when God first calls Abram God takes Abram so many steps before he finally brings him to covenant he takes him so many steps he moves Abram and his wife from his father's house his father was an idol maker. We know the story. He said, I got to pull you away from everything you know, everything that's familiar. And I need you to trust me. Go to a land I will show you. That's the first step. I just need you to start walking. Don't matter. You don't know the staircase. You don't know the path. You don't know where you're going. I just need you to start walking. That's hard for a lot of folks. Some people, they need too much control to just start walking. Come on, Amen. Come on, <laughs> Some people are control freaks. I need to know all the details. Who's going to be over there? What time we're going? What time we're leaving? Who bringing the food? Who cooking the food? Who fixing the plates? What type of cutlery do they have? Some folks need to know every little detail before they take the first step. Let me tell you, for free, you won't get far with them. I can tell you for free You won't get far with God with that mentality Amen. God says I speak You start walking Come on, Abram go to a land I will show you You gotta leave your daddy's house You gotta leave what you know, who you know Man get stuck in this rut We like what's familiar If it ain't familiar we don't wanna go If I don't know it I don't want no parts of it Abram at this point is 75 years old That's pretty old ain't it He said get up and go somewhere you ain't never been before Just start walking That's the first step that take out so many church people. Yeah. <laughs> Come on, that take out so many. I'm just waiting on God. Are you sure? Are you sure? Are you sure God's not waiting on you? <laughs> I need you to go back again. I'm just waiting on the Lord. How long have you been waiting on him, honey? <laughs> I, I just need to be sure that you are actually waiting on him and he's not waiting Come on, on you. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> The longer you remain obedient, the greater the reward. So God takes Abram and his wife from his father's house. And Abram takes Lot with him, as we well know. And Abram and Lot, while following God, begin to acquire so much stuff. Mm, come on, man. They acquire so much, they eventually have to separate. Amen. They can't stay together. And then one of my favorite passages of scripture in the Bible happens that dispelled a, a long old myth that the church always taught. I think we're just now starting to wake up. Uh, the whole you don't question God thing. Come on. Because there is a dialogue between God and Abram. Yeah. Come on, Pastor. Say that. 
Come on. And God said, should I hide what I'm about to do from my servant Abram? Because God knew he was going to Sodom and Gomorrah. He was going to tear it up, which is where God was, right? So he said, should I hide this from my servant? And so they had this conversation. And so God said, will you destroy it if there's 50 righteous people there? God said, no, nah, I won't destroy it. And Abram said, well, wait a minute, Lord, if I could ask you again. But would you destroy it if there's 40 righteous people there? God said, I won't destroy it. Abram said, Lord, please forgive me. I'm not trying to be disrespectful. Lord, if there's 30 righteous people there, will you destroy it? God said, I won't destroy it. He said, well, can I ask again? If there's 20 righteous people there, Lord, will you destroy it? He got all the way down to 10. And by the end of it, I said, man, you can't talk to God. <laughs> he is trying to negotiate a deal that will save the city. But I believe what Abram missed was it ain't 50 righteous people there. It ain't 40 righteous people there. It ain't 30 righteous people there. It ain't 20 righteous people there. Abram is not even 10 righteous people. The only reason Lot is getting out of there is because he's connected to you. That's what's alarming. It wasn't even 50 righteous people in two whole cities. My God. My God. So there's a whole conversation they have, and Abram gets a better understanding of who God is mm -hmm. and what God is capable of. He's uh -huh. seen the power of God. Mm -hmm. He's also seen the, the compassion of God. There's a whole negotiation process. Uh -huh. yeah. Amen. <laughs> there's a conversation happening. Amen. Glory Amen. to God. And so now, after I read that, I said, if Abram can talk to God like that, maybe I can give it a shot. Uh -huh. <laughs> I seen Gideon do it too. Come so man, man. Man. Come on. I seen Gideon talk to the Lord like that too. So when stuff started happening, I said, "Well, Lord, wait a minute now. How come?" So Abram is learning God. That's step number two. First, we will start walking. Step number two is learning the character and the personality of God. Ninety percent of the church don't know the personality of God. Amen. Come on. Amen. Come on. It's very sad. It's very sad. Come to church every Sunday. You don't even understand the personality of the person you're praying to. Come on. My people perish for a lack of knowledge. That's the word. That is the word. So Abram, after this negotiation process with God, he goes and rescues Lot. Gets him out. So God tells Abram he's going to have a son, right? Mm -hmm. And Abram is confused. He's like, wait a minute. I don't have a son. All I got is Eliezer, a servant in my house. So when I die, everything's going to go to him. That's it. Well, you're talking about a son. I don't understand. Right. A lot of different steps God took Abram through. Mm -hmm. God said, no, you're going to have your own son, right? Mm -hmm. So then you flip over one chapter because, you know, they still went on it a while. Uh, Abram's old, Sarah's old, right? She's barren, she's never had a child. And so uh, Sarai suggests to Abraham to have a baby with Hagar. Mm -hmm. Not God's plan. Uh -huh. Come on. Not God's plan. Come on. So husbands and wives, we have to be careful what we suggest to each other. Mm -hmm. yes. Because it could be a good idea on paper, but is this God's plan? Is it God's plan? God didn't say nothing about Abraham having no baby mama. He didn't say that. No, <laughs> he didn't say that. That's not what he said. So Sarai suggests that Abram to have a baby with Hagar. Uh, that was Sarai's plan. So uh, spouses, husbands, and wives, we got to make sure that we're not trying to give our significant other what we think and what we want instead of what God thinks and what God wants. Otherwise, you could shipwreck the, the marriage. Because yes. this small decision became a much greater part problem later, as we well know. Yes. And in today's culture, ooh, we, there's no telling what would have happened. Amen. Because Sarai actually had great respect for her husband, but there's a lot of wives don't respect their husband at all. Come on, man. And the other way around, a lot of husbands don't respect their wives. Amen. So we want to be careful. Got to be careful. Got to be careful. Not God's plan. Then, of course, things go bad. And Abraham has to put his baby mama out. Mm -hmm. She got to go. Take this bread and this pitch of water. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Y'all just gone out there in the desert and start walking. <laughs> Y'all can't stay here no more. <laughs> Y'all can't stay here. 
You got to go. Because you know me and my old lady man. So now you got to leave. And I love her. I ain't leaving her. Okay, I ain't, ain't going to stay there. I'm going to push on. <laughs> I'm going to push on. I think we know how that one goes. <laughs> Hagar and Ishmael, they wasn't passing the vibe check no more. Once Hagar had a baby, she started resenting her mistress. Mm -hmm. Guaranteed to happen every single time. So, fellas, just stay home. Mm -hmm. Stay in the house. Get you a hobby. Take up wood cutting, painting. Amen. Try to get a ship out of a bottle. I don't care what you do. Stay in the house. <laughs> Just, just stay in the house. It ain't worth the headache. It ain't worth the stress. Hey Amen. Find you a hobby. Stay in the house. It's hard to fall in temptation when you're sitting in the living room. Amen. <laughs> I don't know what came over me. Yeah, I'm talking to somebody. <laughs> I was going over there to another study, huh? No, you wasn't. <laughs> Minister in your living room. Amen. <laughs> Stay in the house, man. Stay in the house. You fellas want to go out? Nah, I think I'm going I'm to stay in today. <laughs> so, Abram is 86 when Ishmael is born. Mm -hmm. 86 years old. There is nothing significant in scripture from God that we know of for 13 years. All right. Let's do some math. Abram was 75 mm -hmm. the first time God came. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Ishmael comes about when he's 86. Mm -hmm. And God tells him, I'm going to establish my covenant with the child that's coming, not the one that you have. All right. mm -hmm. All right. 13 years later, who's got faith like this? Mm -hmm. <laughs> who's got faith to keep on waiting? For God, as time is, Lord, I ain't got much time left now. <laughs> there is nothing significant in scripture from God for 13 years. God tells Abram, who is now 99 years old, your wife Sarai is going to bear you a son. I just said, time out, Lord. You've been saying that for 24 years. You've been saying that for 24 years. For 24 years, yeah. you've been telling me this. God said, Ishmael is cool. I got him. But the son you're going to have is named Isaac. I'm not going to establish my covenant with Ishmael. You tried to fabricate something that I never told you to do. Oftentimes when things take too long, we put our hand to it and we want to make something happen because we get tired of waiting. Who's got faith like this? He said, no, I'm going to establish my covenant with Isaac, the son I promised you in the first place. You got to wait on me just a little while longer. <laughs> it's, it's worth the wait, y'all. It's worth the wait. Abraham's now 99 years old. God tells him, your son going to bear you a wife, Sarah Lab. Shall I find pleasure? Come on. <laughs> at this age? <laughs> at this age? Yes, the son I've been talking to you about for 24 years is named Isaac, not Ishmael. Mm -hmm. It's Isaac. Sometimes, because what God said is taking too long, uh -huh. we try to make things happen on our own. Come on. Some of us are trying to make Ishmael the promise when God said, no, 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 it's Isaac. <laughs> but, but Ishmael is convenient. Hagar was already there in the house. Come on, uh, it wasn't really a whole lot of work involved <laughs> uh, to get Ishmael. Uh, thank you, Holy Ghost. That's how you know it's an Ishmael and not an Isaac. It come easy. Come on, <laughs> now, there's no work. Involved in it. When God said, I'm going to give you Isaac, you got to cut yourself. Come on, uh, this covenant ain't complete until you circumcise. Come on, uh, right. Right. It don't cost right. you nothing. And it's coming too easy. It ain't Isaac, baby. It's Ishmael. Right. I think it's convenient that a year before it was time for 
Isaac. He said, I need you to enter into a new covenant. I need you to circumcise everybody on the eighth day. I understand you're a grown man and you're old and you never did it before, but I need you to go cut yourself. <laughs> Father, if there's anything in my life that is blocking my Isaac, we can cut it off of me. Father, if there's anything in my environment, in my territory that I'm holding on to that's keeping Isaac in the distance,
prepared to walk away from something you mm. thought was the promise? Come on now. Father, don't let me weary in waiting mm -hmm. that I settle for a decoy. Yeah. Come on, Pastor. A lot of folks do this in relationships. Yeah. They get tired of kissing frogs, so they say, I'll settle for the one I got. Mm. I pray for you today. Father, don't let us settle for decoys. Mm. Don't let us settle for doppelgangers. Don't let us settle for fakes in the name of Jesus. But Lord God, we send into our lives what you desire for us to have. May we receive it with open arms. Remove the, 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 the decoy. Remove the fake. Remove the phony, oh God. Remove the placebo and give us the authentic in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus, I'm almost out of here. Father, cut me. Father, cut me. Don't let me weary in waiting that I settle for a decoy when the real thing is right around the corner. Father, cut me. If I don't have the sense to do what you told me, cut me if I'm too stubborn to keep following you. Cut me, oh God. Hey, if God put a clock on your breakthrough, mm -hmm. could you weather the storm? Come on, man. There was a clock in your house when you got up out of bed every night and it said 24 years. 300 days, five hours, <laughs> 30 minutes, Come on, man. and 10 seconds All right. until you get that thing you've been praying about. Could you keep walking if you had to stare 24 years in the face every day? Come on, man. 24 years, I'm 75. Uh, I, I don't have time to keep waiting. On, if man. you knew how far off or how close it was, could you keep on waiting on God? <laughs> a lot of folks say, for God I live and for God I die, but they'll give up along the way. <laughs> they'll sit down in the journey. On, 25 years is a long time to keep hearing the same answer from God over and over again that when I pray for something new God say nope I'm still going to give you the same thing Come but on. God it ain't got here yet just wait on me baby on, can you imagine waiting over and over again on, can I be honest with you before I get out of here I wouldn't even want to go to altar call no more alright <laughs> because I already know what God's going to say I already know what he's going to tell me. He's been giving me the same answer for 10 years. It ain't manifest yet. He ain't got nothing new to say. It's the same thing. I'll make you a father of many nations. Abram, go outside and count the stars. If you can count them, that's how many your descendants will be. Abram, I'm going to make you a great nation. Kings are going to come from you. Abram, I'm establishing my covenant with you. It's been 15 years. I'm still looking for it. Anybody want to come to the altar? I want to come to the altar. I'm still waiting on the last thing God told me. 20 years go by, still no promise. I tried to make something happen and God said that wasn't it. Three more years go by, here comes God. I'm getting ready to move in your life. Okay, Lord, I'll see it when I see it. One more year goes goes by, here comes God. I'm going to give you a son, his name is Isaac, but you got to cut yourself, cut myself. You got to cut yourself before you can get it. How many of us? <laughs> You're asking a grown man to circumcise himself. Come on now. <laughs> If God put a clock on your breakthrough, could you weather the storm? I'm done. I'm close. I'm out of here. If you knew it would take 25 years for your breakthrough to come, would you remain faithful? We make Abraham's story sound like a microwave. Abraham went through so many changes. <laughs> He went through so many changes. Years of growth. Years of development. Just maybe. I'm not the person that's made for all these dreams and visions I've been having. Maybe I'm not him yet. dreams and visions so I don't quit. But maybe I haven't matured enough to put that on and walk in it. Some folks get to a place in life they stop changing. Amen. Father, I don't want me to get so stubborn that I stop changing that my destiny stops moving. 
years of growth, years of development. <laughs> Just maybe I'm not yet the person. All those dreams and visions are for anybody hating on me. I'm just not him yet. <laughs> maybe they like me, maybe they don't. Doesn't matter. I'm not effective enough for them to even notice. They're not teaming up on me. I'm not even a blip on the radar yet. <laughs> Simply put, you're not there yet. Perhaps we're not there yet. And that's a very humbling conversation to have with Joseph. Yes, it is. Yes, it is. Because I thought. Come on. Come on. That's it. That's it. Uh huh. I thought I was doing it. Yeah. <laughs> thought, thought I was it, baby. Thought I was it. Yeah, Lord. Only to find out you got about 10 more years of growth to go. <laughs> You're not ready yet. You thought you was ready, but you can't handle this glory that's coming. Yes, you won't be able to handle it. Yes, you won't be able to handle it. Just maybe I have to go back to the potter's wheel. Yes. So that God can continue to mold me. I gotta stay on the potter's wheel so God can continue to smooth out the rough edges. Yes. Just maybe I gotta go back into the fire. Yes. Come out of the fire. Steal some problems. On, back to the drawing board. Come on, Come on. And I'm back on the wheel again, digging yeah. more. Because yeah. I don't know about you, but I need God to work on all of me. Even to touch every area of my life. Mm -hmm. I heard Bishop Wallace say this, so I'm stealing. <laughs> I need to touch every area of my life. I, I don't want to be good just in ministry. Mm -hmm. I want to be a good husband. Mm -hmm. I don't want to just be a good husband. I also want to be a good father. Mm -hmm. I don't want to just be a good father. If I'm called to ministry, if I'm a child of God, that means I'm supposed to be a community Come on. person. Come on, yes. A person of community. Yes. Amen. So that means I can't be walking around with no attitude. I need him to work on my attitude. I'm on the pilot's wheel. I need him to touch every area. Yes. Every area yes. of my life. Because I'm not him yet. So whatever it is that's holding me back, I can't be in the marketplace saying, oh, I wish nobody would talk to me. No, no, no. You're in ministry. you got to minister to folks. It's folks hurting on the aisle three. It's folks crying in the book section. It's folks that need somebody to let know at the checkout counter. That's why that person at the door looking sad and somber. They need somebody to walk in and give them a word. Touch every area of my life because I'm not him yet. I'm not him yet. I don't want to just look good on the outside, but I'm checked up on the inside. I'm not I know that you've been waiting, but this is your green flag to hang in there a little while longer. At least it's good I know I'm not him yet. Amen. Maybe I'll pick up a book. Maybe it's good to know I'm not him yet. I'll get back into a posture of being home. Come on, man. Come on. A year before Isaac was born, three men showed up at the tent of Abram. And without delay, Abram immediately goes to serve these three men. That's it, that's it. He tells Sarah, prepare some food. Go ahead and slaughter a calf. Fat and calf. We're we going to cook for these guys. We're going to treat them with hospitality. Maybe this is the part a lot of church folk ain't got yet. We walk around with our noses in the air like we're somebody and we try to look down on folks when God wants us to learn how to honor people Amen. of all walks of life. Yes. How can we handle ministry on a grand scale if you don't know how to treat people? How you want to grow your business if you're not a person of community? 
grow business, you got to shake hands and kiss babies. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Come on. You got to go to fundraisers and mixers and invite people to dinner. I don't like people all in my house. <laughs> you gonna be? <laughs> you got to throw some stuff on the grill for fellow entrepreneurs, for folks in the industry. You got to have a, a, a tribe of people trying to go where you're going. But if you're not a community person, you're gonna be out there by yourself. green flag to hang in there just a little while longer. Don't you give up. Amen. Don't you give out. It's going to pay off after a while. Yeah. You shall yeah. finish well. Hallelujah. You shall finish well. You shall finish well. I pray that you finish well. May your feet move with the swiftness of the Pray that you finish well. You must finish well because your obedience is going to outlive you. Your disobedience will too. What will you pass to the next generation? You must finish well. I believe you will hear well done, good, and faithful servant. You've been faithful over a few things. Hang on in there. It's small right now, but hang on in there. They don't know your name yet, but hang on in there. You're not making millions yet, but hang on in there. You don't have employees yet. Yet. But hang on in there. You've been faithful over a few things. The glow up from entrepreneurs. I don't know where that's coming from. Hang on in there. He's gonna send you some help. He's gonna send you some help. He's gonna connect you with the right people. Oh God, may you send destiny helpers into our lives. May you set a way, may you set a divine appointment like you did at the tent with Abram and the three men that were angels. I read something that puzzled me. One of the men said, I'll be back around this time next year. I always thought it was strange next year Isaac was born. <laughs> Interesting scripture. Okay. He said, I'll return to you this time next year. Next year Isaac was born. Lord, may we have divine appointments with people that can make next year our reality. Come on. Yes. Can't have divine appointments if you don't want to talk to nobody. Come on. Amen. If you don't want to network, you got to get out there. You could be blocking your own blessings. Yes. Abram saw those men and invited himself to help them. Mm -hmm. I preached this before. Mm. Mm. Okay, I got it. <laughs> I got it. I got it. You've been faithful. I shall make you a ruler of many. Twenty-five years waiting on a blessing. We make it sound like a microwave. Truth be told, some of our journeys take so long because we hard-headed along the way. We make it take longer. I do wonder, Abram stayed in Canaan 10 years. Now I'm just going back through it. It's around the time that Ishmael was born. I do wonder if that delayed him. We have no scriptural reference for this. Just a thought. Just know that Ishmael wasn't God's plan. Wonder if that venture cost him 10 years. Sometimes we set ourselves back because we are headed. That should have happened by now. And God said, you're not listening. <laughs> I'm finished on your feet all over the building. Oh, Father. It's 
better to obey than to sacrifice. Saul thought sacrifice was going to please God. Samuel said it's better to obey. It's better to obey. Let us be obedient to the word of God. Amen. Let us be obedient to what God says to us in prayer. And if he's not saying anything, are you praying enough? Are you listening? That's good. The word of the season is obedience. So every day my feet hit the floor, I'm saying, Lord, what is it today? For the Holy Spirit is going to lead you in all truth. And he will not speak on his own. The Holy Spirit knows the heart and mind of God. So when the Holy Spirit is speaking to you, it's coming from the throne room. So every day my feet hit the floor, Lord, guide me. Send the comforter to minister to me. Send him to minister to me. God Almighty. Jesus said, I must go where the comforter can't come. I can't be with you always, but when I go and I'm ascended, the Father's going to send you the advocate who will lead you in all truth. And he won't speak on his own. That's a beautiful thing. I need God's word. God's heart and God's mind. Amen. We may have messed up along the way, but God knew that was going to happen. May have delayed us, but it didn't deny us. And he forgives us over and over and over again. One time God said to me, he said, if I destroyed everybody for messing up, <laughs> wouldn't nobody be here? He said, if I destroyed everybody for messing up, wouldn't nobody be here? Because all fallen short of the glory of God. So we don't have to let shame and guilt beat us up. No one would be here. You ain't, you ain't the only one sin. <laughs> you sat next to one. Amen. <laughs> you ain't the only one fall short. Look around. All have sinned. And that's why talking about the cross should never get old. Amen. Amen. We should never get tired of hearing that Jesus hung, bled, and died for a sinner like me. Yes. And not only did he die, he got back up out of the grave. Yes. And when he got up, he had all power. Yes. All power in his hands. Yes. And that's what we got to tell folks in the marketplace. Jesus died for you yes. because he loves you. Yes. That he hung on the cross from the sixth to the ninth hour. Yes. Had to lift himself up just to breathe. Yes. Against the old rugged cross. Yes. So when he lifted himself up, the wood would scrape his back. That was already wrought from being flogged with the cat and nine tails. Can you imagine this level of torment? The Romans had perfected torture to make you suffer, but you don't die. You alive to feel everything. What a God. And it really just came home and he said, if I destroyed everybody that messed up, nobody would be here. That's why the suffering had to be so bad in Calvary. So that I could give you so much grace and so much room yes. and so much time. Uh, my wrath had to be satisfied. 
For it pleased the Lord to bruise him because he satisfied his wrath. That's why he gives us all this time. That's why when people get exposed like Diddy for 30 years, he's been doing X, Y, Z. That's a lot of grace. That's a lot of time to get it right. It's a lot of time. We're seeing a lot of it. And all God wants us to do is to repent. Turn away and get it right. Turn away and get it right. Amen. Amen. Father God, in the name of Jesus, we come to you now just to say thank you. Lord God, we thank you for what you're doing in this season. We thank you, oh God, for what you're doing in this season. Father, we thank you for breakthrough. We thank you for breakthrough. We thank you for breaking through in this season, oh God. Lord God, we thank you for dream, for dreams and visions manifesting and coming to pass. We thank you, oh God, that many in this room are going to finish well before the year is out. We thank you, oh God, that many things are going to shift and change and lives will never be the same before the year is out. Lord God, we thank you for the upgrade that's coming because we've been faithful, because we've been obedient. We praise you on credit now in the name of Jesus. May the lives of your people never be the same after today. May you do something different and new in their lives, oh God. May it manifest in the earth, Father. I see a cloud the size of a man's hand. It's coming, it's coming, it's coming. It's coming, it's coming, it's coming. We thank you, oh God. We thank you, oh God. We thank you, oh God. Father God, as we depart from this place, but never from your presence. Keep your loving arms all the way around us. Amen. Father, don't let no hurt, harm, or danger. Don't let no hurt, harm, or danger come to us. Lord, make sickness behave. Yes. Every day is a new type of variant. Yes. Keep us from sickness, Father. Yes. Every day blood is running in the streets. Make the death angel behave concerning us. Put your mark on our forehead, Father. That when you loose the angels into the earth, they see the mark and they pass over. Put the marks on our homes, oh God. Hey, God. May the death angel identify us in traffic and pass over. May he pass over. Make the death angel behave. Lord, I pray you will rebuke the devourer. The little fox is eating at the, at the vines in our lives. Yes. Restore everything the locusts and canker worms and palm worms. We pray for you to restore us, God. Restore us, God. Restore us, Father. Whatever I lost, whatever broke down, I pray you restore it. Hey, in the mighty name of Jesus. Yeah, in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen.